was a sunny October morning on the island of Sodor. But James, however, was in a spiteful mood. Boko was at Wellsworth Station. Hello, James. Lovely weather, eh? Once Boko received his answer, it didn't take him long to realise that James was not very happy. Heh, <laughs> it's alright for you. You don't have a firebox. I'm extraordinarily hot. Oh, sorry about that. Why are you sorry? It's not your fault on a steam train. I also have a lot of extra passengers and I have to hurry to get them to their stations on time. Well, if you're hot, my eyes suggest you don't go so fast. Who are you to tell me what to do, Boko? You are, after all, only a branch line diesel. Boko was upset as James departed from Ellsworth. Oh, don't worry about him too much, Boko. He's just a bit hot and bothered. Thanks, Isabella. Then, Toby arrived. Hello, Boko. How are you? Truth be told, Toby, not fantastic. Oh, that's a pity. Is it, is it James? How did you know? He hasn't been very cheerful all day. I met him at Ellsbridge this morning. Called Henrietta a shack and called me a box on wheels. He just never learns, does he? He certainly doesn't. I'd like to pay him out. Well, it's been great talking to you, Toby, but I must be off. Don't worry about James too much. But Toby did worry about James. He wanted to get him back from being so horrid. But as the day progressed, Toby could not think of any way he could get back at James. Later, Toby was waiting at a signal, still thinking hard, when Mavis arrived. Oh. Hello, Toby. Toby! Hmm. Oh, Toby, I do believe Mavis is trying to talk to you. Huh? Oh, oh, oh. sorry, Mavis. I was, um, I was thinking what about? Right well, you know, I'm James. Turn him in the road. Yes. Ball him up. Shut turn up, him in the George! Road. Well, he hasn't been very pleasant lately, and I'd quite like to teach him a lesson. Can you think of anything I might be able to do, Mavis? Well, you could shunt him up the... I don't think I'll do any shunting. Oh, well, I'll do it for you, Toby. No, no, thank you, Mavis. Well, you could tell him some sort of scary story and then make the events of that story come to life. That's a good idea, Mavis. Although, I don't actually know any scary stories. But thanks, Mavis, and goodbye. Later, Toby was in the yard waiting to return to his shed when his driver returned from the yard manager's office. I've got exciting news, Toby. Tomorrow, the fat controller wants us to take a team of railway inspectors around the line. We are to pick them up from Crovens Gate Station. Oh, that's something different. I'm sure Henrietta will enjoy herself. I like going to Crovens Gate as well. It's big and bustling. Toby, you may now leave the yard. Just wait for the signal to go green. Next day, Toby arrived at Crozen's Gate. Scarlowy, Duck, and Butch were there. Hello, Scarlowy. Brought the inspectors, have you? Indeed, I have, Toby. Scarlowy's been telling us stories about the inspectors, Toby. Oh, that's nice. Then Toby had a sudden idea. <gasps> Scarlowy, do you know any ghost stories? Why do you want to hear about ghosts, Toby? Toby explained his reason. Scarlowy thought for a bit. Then spoke. I think I know a story. Please, Please tell, tell us. us. Very well. Here is the story I like to call The Forgotten Engine. Once, long ago, there was an engine. He was a very white engine. He was as white as, well, a ghost. 
he had no name, only a number, 47. He was spiteful and thought that no other engine was better than he was. But he worked hard too and was a valuable asset to the railway. He worked on the small Kiel Godred line. But one night, 47 was waiting in a yard when he heard a whistling and shouts of help, help, I can't stop. A runaway train was heading straight toward 47. The engine which was running away was old and ready for scrap. 47 tried to get out of the way, but he had no fireman or driver, so he could not go anywhere. Help! Help! Not me! Ah! The impact threw 47 off the rails. 47 was damaged, but not beyond repair. But repair was an expensive option, and the manager decided it would be a lot cheaper to scrap him and get a new engine. But 47 was not ready to accept his fate. Nearly two weeks after he had been scrapped, the body of the manager was found near some railway tracks. And beside the body, there was a nameplate. The nameplate read, and another two weeks later, after the manager was killed, the new engine mysteriously disappeared. Three days later, it was discovered in a lake. Another night, a while after the engine was found, there were reports of a runaway engine, white like a ghost. Workmen quickly rushed to derail the engine by ripping up the tracks, but it never arrived. Where's that train? It is rumoured every October 31st, 47 returns, looking for his next victim. For a while, the others remained quiet. Then, Toby spoke. Now that is a decent story. It sends shivers through your boiler. I can't think how long it took for you to make that story up, Scarlowy. Scarlowy looked at his buffers and then spoke. It took a long time, Toby. But Scarlowy didn't sound as if he were telling the truth. Maybe it wasn't his story at all. Later, Toby was in the Peel Godred Yards talking to the Fat Controller. He was telling him his plan about getting back at James. The Fat Controller agreed to Toby's plans and strolled away. No sooner had the Fat Controller left, James arrived. He looked cross and confused. Why have we stopped? You're completely out of water, James. Quick, Reg, go tell the signalman. So James's fireman set off for the signal box. Toby saw his chance. Hello, James. Would you like to hear a story to pass the time? That depends. What sort of story? A ghost story. Huh. Go ahead, do your worst. So while Toby told James the ghost story, Toby's fireman talked to James's driver and told him their plans. He agreed. He was sick of James too. And by the time James's fireman had returned from the signal box, Toby had finished the story. What rubbish, snorted James. Toby, we are to help James to the water tower, said his driver. So they did. Oh, can't you go any faster, you stupid tram? This is the slowest journey I've ever had. Thanks for sparing my feelings, James. That night, James arrived at Kelsthorpe Road Station. Sir Topham Hatt was on the platform. Toby's plans were coming into fruition. Hello, James. Murdoch was due to take a heavy goods train to the Peel Godred Yard, but his regulator has jammed shut. So I need you to take his train instead. Certainly not. I despise trucks. You fail to see the fact, James, that I was not asking you a question. I was telling you to do something. Now cease your whinging and get coupled up. James was furious. He took out his anger on the unfortunate trucks. Ah, you twit! Shut up. 
Now, let's get going. I'll show them how to handle trucks. A little while after James had left, an obscure shape glided into the station. Gordon was startled. Ha! Ah, who are you? Uh, oh, Toby? Why are you dressed like a ghost? I'm going to scare James. He's been ruder than ever lately. I'm going to spook him in the Pill Godwood Yards. Hmm, well, good luck then. Why? I overheard some workmen talking. They said something about points failures along your line, so you might be waiting a while, Toby. Hmm, I don't like the sound of that. It was very late when James finally reached Pill Godwin Yards. He was most annoyed. He was surprised to see Dukins at Handleton and Scarlow Railway there. What are you two doing here? We were on our way up to the Blue Mountain Quarry when we heard news that the tree had fallen on the line. It still hasn't been moved. Yes, so we're going to stay the night here. Heh, <laughs> good thing I'm not. That was when James's driver spoke up. I wouldn't be too sure about that, James. What do you mean? What he means is, you're going to have to stay the night here as well. We want to get home to our families. But that's not fair. There's no shed here. You can see handle don't have a shed, and you see them complaining? We'll just shunt the trucks into a siding and be on our way home. The yard manager's lent us his car. Soon, James has shunted away the trucks and settled down in the siding. Duke and Sir Handel were already asleep. James was too cross to sleep. He was thinking about insults when... I didn't think any trains were scheduled tonight. He then heard a distant puffing. Who's there? No reply. Whoever it was, it was getting closer. A very white engine rounded the corner. It eyed James suspiciously. James was frightened, but he became downright terrified when he saw the engine's nameplate. 47. James wanted to scream for help, but he could not find his voice, and he could not escape the engine's menacing glare. A sudden flash of lightning brought James to his senses, and he found his voice. It's the ghost! It's the ghost of 47! Ah! Help! Save me! Duke and Sir Hand woke up suddenly. Who's that, James? 47 looked solemnly at James. Disappeared. James didn't get back to sleep that night. He kept his eyes wide open, searching for 47. In the morning, the fat controller came to see him. Hello, James. <laughs> you look like you've seen a ghost. But I have, sir. He was here last night. We saw him too. He was very white. The fat controller chuckled. Oh, James, this has all been one big prank. Organised by Toby, in order to get back at you for being horrid. Toby? This was all Toby? Oh, when I next see that engine, I'm going to rip his wheels off. Rash, isn't he? James found Toby at the wall. Hey, Toby, I don't know how you did that last night, but it wasn't funny. What? The fat controller told me all about your trick. Yes, I was going to trick you, James, but I was held up at Kelsthorpe Road Station and couldn't make my way to the Peel Godron Yards. Wait, so you weren't there? No. Well, then who was? What do you mean? There was an engine there. He was he was white. I, I'd, I'd never seen him before. It was 47. So that's why Scarlow sounded so unsure. It wasn't a made-up story at all. He was telling an actual story. So that's why the story's called The Forgotten Engine. Nobody remembers him. 47 lives.